Hey guys, Andrew Shrout. I'm here in the sideboard with Jared Betcher. How's it going, Jared? Great. So you showed up for the Invitational with one of the spiciest legacy brews I think I've ever seen. You've shown up with Grixis Painter. So tell me a little about just what's going on with this deck and why you chose to play it. Uh, a little bit of everything's going on. It's got the typical Painter Servant Grindstone, but it also has like since it's divine top counterbalance, because our counterbalance curve is insane, it just has basically everything you could want in a deck. Also, it's Goblin Welder. Right, yeah, there's just... I, I call this that Grixis Painter, because it, I mean, that's the closest I could come up with to what it is at its core, but, of course, the, the Painter, the, the Painter Servant Grindstone package, it's almost like an afterthought. Uh, there, there actually are only two Painter Servants and one Grindstone, which you just kind of eventually find when you're good and ready, I suppose. Yeah, it's you. It's basically almost a backup plan, but it's also your main plan. You just have to figure out how you can set it up through everything else, and if it's good enough in that game state that you're in currently. Right. Okay. So, if your if your main game plan, if you're not just like you know jamming four of each combo piece, then you've got a couple of other engines, I suppose, that kind of tie the deck together. Uh, primarily, you get four Sensei's Divining Top, and then the three Counterbalance. You've got the Counterbalance uh, Top package. So, uh, would you say that's kind of the, the glue that holds the deck together? Uh, it definitely helps because it gives us like all the time we need to set up. Once we have it stable, assuming they don't have like Goyce Rampant or anything, we can just infinitely buy time because our curve is great for the counterbalance. Sure. So, the more time a combo deck has to kill somebody, the better the deck is, obviously. Okay. Yeah, so just kind of stretching the game out. Uh, yeah, you, you have four, of course, four Lightning Bolt, four Force of Will, uh, just kind of good cards in that yes. sense so like, to make the game last longer to answer your opponent's cards uh three baleful strix always uh, a, a good way to to stretch a game out kind of a roadblock that digs you deeper in your deck you also yeah. have three goblin welder and i imagine that, that kind of uh, that triumvirate there goblin welder baleful strix uh sensei's divining top which does fancy things with welder like I, I tell me a little about about goblin welder in particular goblin welder is probably one of the top cards of the deck. There's just so much synergy and it lets you to play around and manipulate your deck to how you need to win any sort of game. Like okay. against Delver decks, every time they flip, you can switch your engineered explosives out for Strix and just keep drawing cards. Right. It's, it's everything. Okay. And of course, it is also replacement copies of your win condition, uh, Painter and Grindstone, if they deal with those. Correct. So actually is everything in this matchup. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, it is also an ensnaring bridge in this matchup. Uh, you've got a lot of uh, kind of fun ofs, I would say. Of course, you have, you have the one grindstone, uh, but you also have one ensnaring bridge, and this one this one got me a little excited. One main deck, Dak Faden. Greatest thief in the multiverse. Oh, okay. Well, sure. Yeah. Dak Faden is the greatest thief in the multiverse. <laughs> so you had to play him then. How, how's that card been for you? Uh, he's... The one time I did be, get to cast him, I was able to Faithless Loot multiple times to be able to set up better Welders, better Academy Ruins, everything. Um, other than that, I've had to board him out because I played against five him to Torak decks today, and he's just <laughs> not good when he's already no card advantage. Sure, that's fair. I, I did hear a story about uh, Dak Faden get, getting away with a pretty good heist. My opponent's playing Jund. He uh, goes to cast Liliana. I blind counterbalance trigger and reel Dak Faden. All right, so it's your three mana planeswalker uh, trumped his then in that case. Yeah, it stole the game for me. There we go. <laughs> Dak Faden, always, always stealing games. Okay, so you mentioned you have played against a lot of him to Torok decks. Uh, is that a matchup that you were hoping to face? No, no. Uh, okay. I don't think the matchups are very good because whenever they can like keep us off just the top of our deck, even though it's very strong, we want to be able to have cards and manipulate and work around. Sure rather than them play a guy, him to talk your hand, and then continue on from there. Sure. Okay, but you're also 6-0 against it? I, I have beaten every him to Torak deck, only losing one game to them, so yes. Nice. <laughs> okay. So what are you, what, I guess the answer to what you're hoping to play against is him to Torak decks, apparently. Uh, but what, what are you not hoping to play against with this deck? Uh, I think any like storm combo deck, because they're faster than us. Okay. Um, elves might be a bit faster too, and when I came into this tournament, I did not want to play against like Bug Delver, him to Torak decks. Right. Okay. All right. So basically, other kind of unfairish decks. This deck isn't, doesn't really feel unfair. I guess it's more like right. a control deck than a combo deck. Uh, yeah. It's like a control deck with a backup, like a backup package. Okay. So basically, combo decks that are like more of a dedicated combo than you are prob probably the bad matchup. Yes. Okay. Luckily for you. You're not going to have to deal with any more legacy decks with this deck because you are advancing on to the top eight where you will play standard for the rest of the tournament. Yep. I'm trying to jinx you. Of course, there, there, is, there is one round left to be paired. <laughs> Strange things can happen. 
there's a possibility you, you don't make it, but my prediction is you're locked up for a top eight. So uh, a, a kind of a premature congratulations for that. Thank you. Thanks for sitting down with me, Jared. No problem. Stick around. We've got plenty more coverage coming of the Invitational here in Columbus.